Oh my God, I can't wait to dish. It is just, I mean, we love these sites. Dysfunctional family. I mean, what is it called? Um, a domestic dysfunction, <laughs> right? I, I, read. I mean, like domestic th a thriller and um, just psychological torture in the best possible way. And congratulations on another winner. Oh my God. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me and for doing this for all of us who, you know, lost our tours, you at a mighty blaze and you've all like stepped up in such a, I have to say like, it, you really have such a sense of the literary community and, and what you guys have done for all of us. We're really grateful. So thank you. It, you know, it, it is, you're welcome. It is, you know, it's something that was seven weeks ago or whatever. I feel like I have, like I know every day by heart and you know, it, it, we didn't really have a sense of how long or how long will this go or any of that. So the energy seven weeks ago was, a, you know, and we're, we're keeping it going because we're all readers and a lot of writers, Jenna and Caroline, obviously, and so many authors, Whitney, and then I'll forget everybody who else is an author and tech people and um, uh, creatives and business. I mean, it's just been insane, but, you know, books are essential. They are essential. So it is a thrill. Let me give you um, an intro, Kimberly. Okay. How would you like an intro? I'd love an intro. Let's go. <laughs> Kimberly McCrae is the author of the New York Times bestseller, Reconstructing Amelia, nominated for the Edgar, Anthony, and Alex Awards, where they found her and the Outliers, a young adult trilogy. She is a graduate of Vassar College and the University of Penn Law, where clearly everybody goes to learn to be a writer. Welcome to A Mighty Blaze, Kimberly. Thank you so much for having me. I guess, such a pleasure. So yeah, is, there's such a thing. I used to keep like a list of all of the attorneys who are authors. And then I was thinking like, is that, it's just, I can see why there's a natural jump, but so many people who maybe went to law school and really didn't want to practice or, you know, talk about law school, law, uh, practicing. And yeah, works. well, what's funny is I can remember being in law school and, um, Lisa Scottolini went to Penn also, um, and I can remember she was a you know a few years ahead of me, and um, she was I guess when I was there um, was was giving away in some auction like naming her characters um, mm -hmm. like if you you, know, you could bid on being named up you know a character named after you, and I remember really holding on to that that. Um, that she, you know, she had gone and been a writer and that it was possible. Um, and then like years later, I, um, I ran into her. I remember I ran into her in the bathroom of, um, at the LA Times Book Festival. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. And I like, I it was like cornered her in the bathroom. Um, so actually she was, she's one of the people who blurbed a good marriage. So it all comes around full circle. Oh, um, um, right. And often starts in the bathroom. There's something. Yes, <laughs> it does. I spoke to, because there have been so many interviews, but two authors who had met up and met each other in the bathroom at Amsterdam and knew each other. But like, that's where they first met each other. But yeah, I'm pretty sure, did Julie Buxbaum or Alison Wynn, um, I forget, there were like a whole bunch of UK law um, grads that are authors. Like, yeah, no, it is a very common trajectory. I think in part, because obviously if you end up in law school, you probably have like some language skills and yeah. some writing skills. And so, um, you know, I, I, for one, ended up in law school because it was a, a more secure path than becoming a writer. Um, as every published and, and unpublished writer knows, it stays not a secure path. Um, and I always laugh now when like people read back and they're like, oh, you, you thought it was such an insecure path. I'm like, yeah, but it still is. <laughs> it is forever. Um, so, I mean, it's true of all the arts, right? So um, I think that that law intellectually and law school it's a great, I mean, it's a fantastic um, education. And I, and it was so fun with A Good Marriage to finally get to use it in a book. So I feel like I got my, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of my education. Right, I mean, aside from all of the experts that you spoke to and spent time with and the research, you did put in your time at law school. So I think that, yeah, I think it, it, it's a perfect leap. And I, I, love, um, I love reading this kind of this is just like my new favorite genre and uh, page turners and unexpected twists and congratulations that that this is unexpected the Nicole Kidman series deal oh my god on so that she's developing it with her company and Amazon is that right yes 
Correct. Yes. Yeah. It was just announced yesterday. So I'm thrilled. It's the, um, the Blossom's the same team that um, with HBO is adapting Reconstructing Amelia. So um, I'm very excited. So, I mean, I mean, that is incredible. And, the, you know, everything she's attached to, I'm like loving. And I never really was watching too many of the series, a few of them, but I have, I actually just watched Big Little Lies and Little Fires Everywhere. So I'm just be beyond obsessed. And just thinking about how many things can happen in these stories where it's like you don't see it coming and that's it, that's so exciting and it's really so I mean I feel like I've said it a lot because it's true and we're home and uh, people want to know what to read take their mind off of everything else and just jump into a book which there's no feeling better than that when you're a reader so a good marriage and like the title right there so talk about um Brooklyn, things not being as they seem, and really kind of, I, I mean, I always say that, like, you really never know about people. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, so so A Good Marriage is set in Park Slope, Brooklyn, which is where I live. Um, it's where Reconstructing Amelia was also set. It takes place over a week in the summer when all the kids are away at sleepaway camp, and their parents are gearing up for the event of the summer, which is this adults-only party with a sexually adventurous side. Mm -hmm. It's always just been in good fun, but this year after the party, um, a woman ends up dead and her husband is quickly arrested um, and he reaches out to an old law school classmate um, who is an outsider actually to the neighborhood and she steps up a bit unwillingly but kind of gets wrapped into to helping him. Um, so she really is, you know, this kind of bird's eye view into um, a neighborhood that's different from her own and she has her own marital problems. And so the book is definitely, um, it's kind of part domestic suspense, part legal thriller. It's meant to be really a combination of the two, but it's also genuinely an exploration of what it means to have a good marriage over time. Um, I've been married for um, 18 years. And so, um, you know, that, that's a different thing than, than when you're first married. Um, and I think I was interested in exploring the idea, not just the secrets like a husband and a wife keep from each other, like, oh, you know, they're doing these horrible things to each other, <laughs> but really the, the, the secrets that exist within a marriage. Um, and I think it's so interesting because you can know, you can have friends and know them really, really well, but you cannot really know what goes on inside of marriage. Sometimes people themselves don't really know <laughs> how they feel about their own, that their own marriage. So I wanted to play with that idea and also play with the idea. I think there's a lot of really black and white notions about what makes a good marriage and a bad marriage. Um, and so the book really creates a parallel between that kind of right and wrong and the right and wrong of the justice system and um, how there's a lot more gray in both of those things than um, I think that we realize. Yeah. And, and it's, it's in the gray where, the decisions are sort of made of like what's tolerable and what is allowable and what uh you know and does that keep changing throughout a marriage and and that idea of you know when people say you know you aren't watching game i don't like game shows but like people are introduced now like happily married to the love of my life before and i'm like what like what does that mean like the whole time or right or do they go you know married you know happily married for 24 married for 32 you know ha 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 but like you know, <laughs> That's the trajectory of a life together, you know, and you set off on this path and one doesn't always know. And if you don't know yourself, you know, it could be a really fraught thing. And um, sometimes there's murder. <laughs> I think I, I think that those what ifs and questioning about people being they're just so fascinating and what people will show us and where the cracks are. And eventually, you know, often uh, things just implode in a great book things implode and then not seeing how or why is why we read and go to kimberlymccrete.com for instagram twitter facebook follow her like her and leave messages of of wonderful literary love and also goodreads and amazon five star reviews are really i always remind people to do that it's the least you could do kimberly wrote it and now it's going to be us uh, being developed for a series so um so talk about the idea like which part came first the the murder you know the the woman winding up dead well somebody killed her right <laughs> we know that at the beginning of the book and this party and the idea of summer camp where kids are i guess not going how's park slope going to manage this summer i guess there's going to be no sleep wars for this year <laughs> 
kids are going anywhere. Um, yeah, I don't know. I personally, I'm blocking that out at the moment. I'm not. I'm. I'm not going to think about that. <laughs> not quite yet. Um, yeah. So what comes to me first generally is like the the theme. So yeah, again, in this case, the idea of like looking at what makes a good marriage and the secrets couples keep from the world um, and sometimes from themselves. Uh, and so, so that really came first. And then I'm like, well, so now what story am I going to use to look at it? And and then next comes the character. So I think Amanda, um, who's the the woman who dies at the beginning of the book, um, that half of the book is told from her point of view in the days leading up to her death. And the other half is from Lizzie's perspective as she looks into what happened. Mm -hmm. And so she came to me next. Um, but what's, what inevitably happens is, um, you know, that, that character who doesn't always end up, the first one that comes to you is not always end up being the strongest one. Right. Um, so, you know, from Lizzie kind of took over the book once um, I started writing from her point of view. Um, and so, you know, she, she was in the book um, quite a bit more than Amanda or a bit more than Amanda at the end. Um, but I don't outline my books in advance, like at all, um, which if they have really complex plots. And so that is kind of um, like insane and terrifying <laughs> right that way, because I have to really just write my way into it. So you're right, I did know that a woman died and I did know the, the who done it, or at least the who didn't do it. Um, so that helps me have a spot on the wall to write to, but I figure out a lot as I go along. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that that would be the, you know, staying ahead of the reader kind of thing and how you decide, because I, I don't really like to try and figure too much out, but I do like to see which nuggets were dropped, you know, mm -hmm. like, like, is that important or, well, I think, see, I think everything's important. I mean, the way I read, so, like, I probably could read faster if I didn't read the way I do, because I don't want to you know, miss anything because that's why I read. So I, you know, sometimes people say, well, do you really read the whole book? And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's why, yeah, I do. I really, I really do. So I think because I read like that, things jump out at me and I wonder like, are we going to go back to that? Or was that a trick or, you know, and that's sort of, that's sort of the fun of figuring it out. Um, so right. And so, so for me, a lot of that stuff really comes through re revision because I don't outline in advance. The nice thing about that is you're not married to a single conclusion. Okay. And so I get, the story gets to surprise me too as I'm writing it because I, I didn't decide what's happening yet. And so sometimes something like, I'll be like, I write something, I'm like, why, why did I just make that happen? Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's wrong and I have to get rid of it, but sometimes I'll realize later that it connects up in a way um, that's really interesting. And so when you're talking about the, the kind of breadcrumbs, that's what Stephen King's on writing book calls them, um, that you leave yourself, um, Sometimes I have to go back and and really amplify those once I've decided how it's going to end and, and make sure those things are planted and sometimes pull some things out. Uh, sometimes you tell too much. That's a, It's a very tricky line between making sure you give enough yeah. um, that you want. I want the reader at the end to think, I didn't figure that out, but mm -hmm. I could have figured it out. Um, like you know, so that's the goal. Yeah, you, I just, there's just nothing like going, how do they do that? It's right. it's, it's magical and uh, you know a great deal of research obviously uh, between forensics and law and police and doctors and I mean when you go in and spend and people are awfully generous with their time I know and they get a thank you so that's always very cool too but do they ever help along with the plot or give you information you didn't you weren't necessarily looking for and that helped you know change a direction a bit I mean, for sure. Like, it, I, I would say a bit about this book was about when to set it, right? Because it doesn't involve the trial. It doesn't, it's not, you know, that kind of legal, legal book. It takes place in the period of time between when somebody's arrested and is not granted bail. So he's held at Rikers Island yeah. and uh, then indicted. He's, he's arrested on a different charge, not murder. And then he's subsequently indicted for murder, which by the way, happens to a lot of people who can't afford, he's denied bail, but, but He's very wealthy, but it happens to a lot of people. <laughs> They're denied bail and then held at Rikers, even though they haven't been, you know, they haven't been um, found guilty of anything. So it's kind of a terrifying thing. But um, anyway, so so talking to my expert helped me figure out that that was exactly the right place to put it. Because even though I am a lawyer myself, I wasn't a criminal attorney. So um, absolutely, the the research. Um, shifted things but again I wrote the whole first draft first <laughs> so I, I wouldn't for me I, I didn't want my research to determine my story um, but then once 
I had details, you know, if I need, I tweaked a lot of stuff, you know, um, because I, I can remember one point I showed something to the, um, I had a fingerprint expert um, and he actually like did fingerprinting on 9-11 and stuff. He's like a renowned, and I was saying, oh, it's this with the fingerprints. And he's like, yeah, no, it's not, it's not how it yeah. works at all. Like I was just like, well, that's what they do on like TV. And he was like, yeah, no. Um, so I had to, I had to go through and, and change some stuff and you do like, that means you have to edit, you know, and, and, and shift stuff around a bit. Um, and also I think your default is right. Or you think, well, you'll just make something happen and you'll just say the police are incompetent. They didn't do that. And when you have, when you have police as experts, they're like, uh, we're not actually all incompetent. So <laughs> maybe you could make that a different reason. Um, so it, it, they keep you honest um, as, as a writer. When you consult experts, they call you on the kind of you know, things you're trying to, to use. Well, it, I think that that is so fascinating. I always love hearing about that part of, of a book because uh, you're really getting in there, whether it's you know, district attorney or judge, or you know, you're really seeing, because we know a lot from TV and from reading, but um, but when it's like, no, that wouldn't happen at all. It's like, you know, my world has been rocked. It just happened on a show, you know, who knows yeah. what's real and what's fake anymore. And it's a story. And I'm speaking on A Mighty Blaze today for Pub Day Tuesday, Cinco de Mayo, A Good Marriage. Kimberly McCreet, visit her site uh, at KimberlyMcCreet.com and go to Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. And you're doing the HarperCollins Takeover, right? Are you on <laughs> Yes, now? God help all of us. I'm taking over Harper Collins Instagram Live. I just learned how to go live last night at all, just like on my own. I'm actually supposed to join Megan Miranda from Simon Schuster's Instagram Live. So I'm really excited to talk to Megan. Um, who knows? We may just end up being on our phones talking to each other because I don't know if I'll be able to figure it out, but hopefully I'll, hopefully I'll get it. If you, I, I have complete confidence. You could always phone an expert, but <laughs> not, everybody is like, most people are like a little bit like relaxed about the fact that, I mean, I was watching Kelly and Ryan the other day because I was doing my work and it's on in the background. Like I need a caveat. And Ryan went to grab some prop. It just fell. I thought it was <laughs> set up like a joke, but it just, you know, it happened. And that's not what he normally does. He was in his kitchen. So I kind of like that idea of things being a little bit looser and everybody letting their gray hair down a little bit. Uh, it's just, you know, but I saw that. So you and Megan are doing... I saw something about furniture pilfering. <laughs> I said I was going to sell all the Harper Collins furniture. They let me take over the Instagram. So I took, took over their Instagram all day. And now I'm going to be on the live Instagram tonight. So God knows what could happen. Who I, knows what I will do? That's very I don't know to say. So people go to so people go to the Harper Collins Instagram. Exactly. If you go to Harper Collins is uh I can't pronounce it. Um Instagram. Um I will go live, I guess maybe I guess yeah, at seven PM. And then I'm gonna bring um hopefully <laughs> it will be fun to watch if I at a minimum get I'll get Megan Miranda from Simon and Schuster's and we will be together. I'm gonna watch I well you um tech support with a mighty blaze. So you <laughs> And you'll see Megan come up and you just invite her. That okay. All right. All right. Is that simple? Facebook used to be that simple too. And now we're in Zoom and it isn't that simple, but it used to be. Um, but I digress. Um, so talk, t tell us a little bit more about the relationship maybe and how, uh, uh, between Zach and, wait, uh, Lizzie, when they were in law school and anything that might have been unresolved or is it really like they were friends and that, you know, she's helping him and she gets roped into this or their complications. Yeah. I mean, I think they're, well, it's a mystery. So there are always yeah. complications. <laughs> all, everything's complicated. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, I mean, it, I think their relationship was more simple um, for one of them than it was for the other. And it's always tricky because I don't want to give away. No, I know. It's a very hard book to kind of talk about. That's because the last thing I want to do is say anything wrong. I know. I know. Really go like, no, you're not coming to the red carpet when we do the Amazon. Because <laughs> <laughs> you ruined my book. Um, but like, just I remember when the galley came, I think it's here somewhere. I just was like, I'm in just, you know, from the cover and the title and, you know, certainly your bio, but like just being like, I am in. And, um, but yeah, there's, yeah, so we can't really talk about that. So you're going to be stealing furniture. We know that. Yes. What, what else are you doing and how are your kids doing during the stay at home order and 
No. Yeah, I mean, we're making we're making our way. It's not, I mean, it's not, we live in Brooklyn and again, you know, again, which is the setting of the book, um, but it's, uh, it's not easy to be in New York City. It's obviously a very, it was a very harrowing time to live in the city and, um, you know, people have talked about the sounds of ambulances and the, um, you know, obviously it is much better now, um, but it was, you know, there were a few weeks in there where we live only a couple blocks away from a hospital and it, you know, um, it was a lot. So, um, but New Yorkers in general have been, um, amazing. Um, everyone they are. Yeah. doing what they were, they're told. And it's always remarkable to me <laughs> that yeah. as ornery as we are, <laughs> um, that people have been doing a really good job. So, um, and luckily, we live just a couple blocks away from Prospect Park, so we still have access to that, which is which is great. I mean, the hard part as as a writer is I don't write from home. I, I write at the Brooklyn Writers Space usually, so I don't have access to that. So I've actually, and I have a, a new book I'm working on that um, will hopefully be out in a, in a year from now. So you, that that kind of doesn't stop. So you have to figure out a way to to get yourself the headspace to to do to write new material um, in a different way. Yeah. So what is the like? Where can you write? What what best um, sim, you know, simulates being in a coffee shop or in a writer's, um, you know, in your writer's space? Not at yeah, the- um, getting up at three in the morning. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I haven't been doing that in the past couple weeks because I've been um, helping a good marriage get out in the world um, because it makes you a psychotic person <laughs> to get up at 3 a.m. Yes, it day, but uh, it's quiet um, at 3 a.m. is the upside. So. Um, you know, it did, um, it had, it did work, um, at least for a, for a period of time, um, to at least have that peace and quiet. Yeah, there's nothing, it's amazing how much can get accomplished. Three is a little early for me. I'll come down at four. Right. I mean, I'm not saying I haven't done three, but three, once it's like after 3.30, I'm okay. Right. But, but then I, you know, crash at some point during the Well, week. that's the thing. That's the thing. I know. I think it's about that time. Yes, you pay you pay the price one way or another. Yeah, yeah. but there is nothing like that quiet time. Nobody's interrupting you, and really, people for the most part, except for our European friends, are not online. And it's like you get exactly. You know, although I get people going, "What are you doing it up?" And I'm like, well, "What are you doing up? Why are you asking me why I'm up? Why do you think I'm up? I'm up." <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But if you, I mean, if you want to write new material though, you do need that kind of, especially writing the way I write, which is really like, I'm finding my story through being in a scene. Like you really need to get in a, a psychological space that's detached from the world you're in. So um, you need that kind of, that quiet. That quiet time. Well, it's very exciting. It's pub day. It's May 5th, Cinco de Mayo. A good marriage is out in the world and visit Kimberly com, and you can find her on Instagram Live, I just know it's going to be very entertaining at seven o'clock Eastern at the Harper Collins space with Megan Miranda, who will be your guest. So I yeah. just imagine that's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to be do, like back in the old days, and there'd be a lot of um, book events same night, especially when I'd be in New York. I'd want to be in all those places, and you don't want to be rude, you don't want to leave, but like there are a lot of things happening tonight, and you can like channel surf and go to a lot of uh, pub day parties. Kind of. I know, which is great. And like, I can even go, like, I can even be having my own and make it. I have a lot of friends with books coming out. And so like, I, you know, I'm going to try to do the same thing myself in between. So it's great. Live and also check your computer out. You could be at like three virtual, take your phones, they're around, grab your husband's and you could be like, you could be. Robin, like, that's all I need. I'm barely going to get on Instagram live. Okay. I got to focus on one thing at a time. <laughs> I'm imagining this evil genius, you know, like. <laughs> see all of the screens and you're just like, you're here, you're here, you're here. It's fun, Kimberly. I like that idea. <laughs> <laughs> just leave it to me to make things complicated. Exactly. Um, before we go though, what is a, a book that you'd like to recommend one of your friends that's coming out or, you know, coming out in the near future? Well, I would like to recommend Megan Miranda's new book. Um, who that um i have already read um the girl from widow hills which i think it's june 23rd um it might be june 26th but um so church yeah yeah, so she'll she'll talk about that tonight but it's a fantastic book and very atmospheric and um propulsive like everything she writes so um i would highly recommend keeping an eye out for that yeah I, i i love the last one so i was really excited um i'm just looking to see if if they're giving me a signal since the wonderful, wonderful team at A Mighty Blaze is making sure that we are 
here and recording. So, um, but I'm okay. not, see, as I just told you to watch three things at once, I can't even talk to you. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. I say, but yeah, I know. So Megan, um, Megan Miranda's book, which is out, I think you're right. I think it's the 26th and some of the dates have shifted, but I think, I think that's when hers is. So look for that and yes. find Kimberly and Megan yucking it up on Harper Collins while swiping furniture. If furniture is not easy, I don't know if one of your characters has pulled it off. That's not the easiest thing. To I know. Do. I should have offered to sell the electronics or sell it. I said I'd be giving away. First of all, I should be selling it. <laughs> That's right. My life of crime is not, it's already not going well because I should be selling things. That's so funny. Well, you tipped your hat a little bit and um, they'll be looking, they'll be watching, they'll be shaking you down as you leave virtually. Exactly. Exactly. Change the password and throw away the key. Kimberly, very, very excited to get to chat with you on Pub Dates. Always a big deal. And we celebrate it here on A Mighty Blaze on Tuesdays. It's a good marriage. Do not miss this book. I'll bring it closer. And yours is yours are behind you. Very lovely and stacked. Look at that. I have my, yes, I did that. I set that up. Excellent, right? Thank you so much for having me, Robin. I really appreciate it. It's a pleasure. Congratulations. I'm going to be watching tonight. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. Okay, you're good. Yeah, I, I think to Kimberly go. Did we? Did right. we I, I was just um, looking. Okay. Yeah, um, my stream quit twice. It's so weird, but you were taping. But then, but I did tape it. So I'll put, uh, ooh, I'm still recording too. So I'm going to stop that. Hold on. I didn't realize we were talking.